I would describe the kind of animation I do as, you know, fitting more into the realm of independent, experimental, fine arts aligned animation. What I love about sort of more independent work is, you know, th th there's just so much potential there to deal with um, so-called serious topics. You know, the hu huge amount of possibilities, I think, in a way that live action um, can be more constricted. I, I was exposed and really liked East European animation from, you know, from when I was quite a little kid. Um, certainly we saw Disney films and things like that, but um, Mum used to take us to Auckland's only art house um, cinema at the time, which is now the classic comedy club, and it went through an incarnation as a porno palace. But back in the 70s, it um, had art house films. It was the only one. Um, and my mum is originally from Warsaw, and she's a Polish Jew. So my mum was really yearning to see European fear and, you know, hear East European languages. And she often took us to these films. I remember Czech and Bulgarian and uh, Polish films. And they were often preceded by animation from Eastern Europe or from Canada. Um, so both these places I came to admire as, you know, having a very rich and wonderful tradition. Soaring, Roaring, Diving, I made in collaboration with Juliet Palmer. Um, it came out in 2008 and so appeared in 2008 in festivals, also in 2009. And we, we also um, won in 2009 um, the Brooklyn International Best Experimental uh, Film Award um, in, in New York, which was, you know, really wonderful and affirming. I, I really like the mix of sort of really cool on the edge technology but also um, wonderful analog techniques, you know, the gesture of the hand-drawn mark and actually being able to combine those together. I would say my influences are various and not just confined to visual arts, but, you know, off the top of my head they would include uh, things like um, Czech and Polish animation and children's picture book illustration, children's toys, especially wind-up tin ones. You know, the most ordinary things can come to life. Um, so, you know, I made this little guy um, in Prague and his jumper is out of a sock. But, you know, se seemingly something inanimate can still be brought to life. In soaring, roaring, diving, I, I used um, a combination of techniques. I, I used um, uh, a lot of After Effects and also the 3D aspect of After Effects where it's almost 2.5D, it's pretend 3D, but you can actually put a camera through and create a sense of um, space. And rather than, you know, seeking the a holy grail of photorealism, I was texture mapping it with um, things like uh, drawing and scans and, uh, you know, paper and collage. There was also frame-by-frame -frame drawing of just sort of 
drawing bit by bit by bit. In the case of Soaring, Roaring, Diving, um, both Juliet and I, in, in the course of making it, um, went through awful personal tragedies of both of us lost our sisters to terminal illnesses. And so the film really explores issues of, of, of grief, of childhood memories, of um, the whole sort of metaphor and question of the glass half full, the glass half empty, uh, journeying, exploration. And there's also um, Super 8 footage that my dad shot, um, Childhood Holidays at Hopi. Um, so, that, you know, there, there's a very strong autobiographical component, but hopefully um, through us sort of dealing with things that are close to us and very personal, um, you know, we've had feedback from others that it also resonates on a u universal sort of level as well. I, I think this is something that we all carry with us from when we were little kids. We have these really strong imaginings as children that, um, you know, if you open the door quickly enough, you're going to catch your toys, you know, up to something, having a big party or doing something. And certainly Toy Story taps into that, but I think it's something we all carry and, and which stays with us, you know, into adulthood.